Are you thinking about taking the CIH? Or maybe you've already registered and are wondering what to study before you actually sit for the exam. Well, this video is all about helping you to make sure you can be successful. Hi, I'm Rachel Walla with Ally Safety and about three weeks ago, I sat for the CIH exam and I passed it. It was a lot of work and I made some mistakes along the way. And I wanted to make this video to provide some tips for people who are hoping to take the CIH exam just with the goal of helping one another out and making sure that you don't make some of the same mistakes that I made. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The Certified Industrial Hygiene Exam is probably the most difficult safety certification there is out there. So previous to taking this exam, I have taken the ASP, the OHST, and the CSP. Currently, the CSP is the only one that I maintain. I would say that the CIH is orders of magnitude more difficult than that. So if you are going to take this exam, you need to be prepared that it's going to be a lot more difficult than those that you take through the Board of Certified Safety Professionals. About 600 people will sit for the CIH exam every year and less than 50% of those people are going to pass it. So after I passed the CIH exam, I wrote a note on LinkedIn asking if anybody else was considering the exam and if they thought a video of tips would be helpful. And I got good response from that post, so that's why I'm doing this video. In addition to that, I also vlogged the process. I started studying for the CIH a week ago, and uh, I don't remember so many things. So I'll be doing a video on that as well, so you can kind of see the journey from application to studying, taking and passing the exam. The good news is I passed. The reason I did that is I don't have a lot of friends who are in industrial hygiene and you probably realize industrial hygienists aren't the most common in the workforce. So there wasn't a lot of people that I could ask stuff and I thought it would be helpful for others if there was a video out there. So stay tuned for that. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to cover some basic tips that I think would be helpful for others because I made this mistake and I don't want you to. So let's get going. Tip number one probably isn't gonna surprise you because it's pretty obvious that it would help to take a test prep course. Now, I will tell you, I did take a test prep course in 2013, which was seven years ago. But you know how it is when you're too busy working to stop and take these tests? That's pretty much what happened to me. So I thought, okay, there's no way I'm gonna have time to take a test prep course with how busy work has been. So I'm gonna use the materials from that previous course to study for the CIH. But let me show you what those materials look like. This is one binder, CIH prep course. And this is the other one. You can see how much material's here. It's just not realistic that you can study that and learn it all and remember it all within a few months of study time. So um, I would say, I'm not gonna give you the name of this particular course because it was seven years ago and it may have changed a lot since then, but um, you want to do one that's really focused on the material that's actually on the test, not on just teaching you industrial hygiene basics, but what specifically is on the exam. So in contrast, let me show you this. Now, I haven't taken this particular prep course, but I have a friend who did take the CIH exam and she was nice enough to give me her prep materials. So this is the binder from her prep course. And it's all PowerPoint slides, so obviously there's not a ton of content in there. And this is realistically something that you can learn from, make note cards on, and distill into the amount of information that you need to take the test. So this is from the Bowen EHS CIH prep course. I would highly recommend them. Although I didn't actually sit through and take the course, I would say this binder was key in me passing the exam because it broke the information down, made it easy to study, and easy to put into practice on the practice tests. The people that I have talked to who took the Bowen EHS course said that it was really helpful, it helped them to pass, and also I think this is a company that guarantees a pass, and so if you don't pass the first time, you can take that course again for free. So they're pretty confident in their product, and I would definitely recommend taking a course from them if you're gonna take it from anybody. And just so you know, this video isn't sponsored. This is just, you know, my tips, what helped me out. So in the prep course that I did take, they did recommend going out and buying this book before you go take the exam, and I didn't do it, but luckily I got it from a friend. And what I did is I went through and read every chapter, made sure that I understood it, and then they have these really cool bulleted lists in the back of every chapter, and it's just like one-liners. 
what I did is I took each of those one-liners and I made a note card out of them and I studied those note cards. That was extremely helpful because a lot of it is pretty closely pertaining to what's on the exam. So yeah, this is a good accompaniment to any prep course and I would say like just a good industrial hygiene book to have as a reference for the future as well. Next up, get a study software program. Datacam software is the one that everybody I know has used. It's been out there for years. It's tried and true. It's, it's a good one to do. I think Bowen EHS also has one and there's a couple more that are coming out on the market. I will tell you Datacam is the one that I did. I went through like all 2,800 questions or whatever there is in the whole period of me studying. So I went through them all. And I will tell you, I have sort of a love-hate relationship with Datacam because it was really difficult and I feel like they asked a lot of trick questions and sometimes maybe they got a little bit too deeply into the weeds compared to what was actually on the exam. Um, so. It wasn't like a perfect solution, but it did do a good job of prepping me for the exam overall. So I would say it's a solid bet, but I would say you may experience a little bit of what I experienced where I'm like, these questions are so hard. There's so many trick questions. It's just really frustrating. And the reality of it in my experience was that data chem questions are a little bit harder than the actual exam. So it's gonna have you climb a little bit higher hill than you need to climb, but it will get you there. So it was a solid choice for me and I don't know if I would have passed without them. Next up, make sure you take time to get really comfortable with science and basic calculations again. This will turn up on the exam over and over and it's also what you need to answer questions like a lot of the ventilation ones and things like that. One of the mistakes I made was if I was going through a practice session at home, um, a lot of times I would be like, oh, I'm gonna skip this problem because I'm gonna work on the problems this weekend. Um, that didn't work out very well. Eventually what I had to do is, you know, halfway through studying, I had to kind of stop everything, go back, make sure I really understood ventilation, basic science, kind of go back and make sure like I was good with stoichiometry and all that all over again. They are a significant portion of the exam and you'll really want to feel confident in those areas. Next up, no ventilation inside and out. You want to know all of the questions. You need to do a lot of practice questions. The ones on the exam aren't terrible in my opinion, um, but you want to be able to make sure that you're really confident in answering those because it's a big portion of the exam. If you have a really good idea of how to address all the ventilation ones, it's going to really improve your chances of passing. Take some time to learn ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Now for me, these topics were confusing because the difference between non-ionizing and ionizing isn't really laid out really clearly in any of the study materials that I found. And then there's different effects and it just gets confusing for me. So I found that I was doing poorly on this part of the test. And if you combine both non-ionizing and ionizing radiation sections, they make up a significant portion of the test. So you do need to know those as well as ventilation. Um, what I ended up doing is I made these study sheets for myself where I drew everything out so it would make sense to me. Um, that was the only way that I could really learn it and process it in my head. I think it's because I'm a visual learner, um, but I think that was really key in me gaining good enough understanding that I was passing those sections on the exam. And my last tip is obvious, but it's probably one of the harder things about taking this test and it's giving yourself time to study. Now for me, I don't have kids and so I was able to devote almost all of my free time to studying for a couple of months. If I had kids, I would start studying earlier just because you have less attention to give to the test. For me, I studied about two and a half months, I think, um, and I didn't feel as confident going into the test as I wanted to. I thought that would be plenty of time and it wasn't. So what I would say is probably give yourself three to four months if you feel pretty confident overall with industrial hygiene going into the test. If you don't have a strong background in industrial hygiene, like let's say you never took a course in college or you haven't taken continuing education courses since, then you probably want to start even earlier, like six months before you take the exam. And it's really true that you do need to devote a lot of time to studying. I personally was kind of hesitant to, I didn't have that much free time because work has been so busy, um, but I was definitely devoting as much time as I could. And like if I was in the car, I was doing note cards, you know, in between meetings, if I had five minutes and was waiting around, I was doing note cards, that type of thing. 
So it definitely is one that you really have to devote some time to. I would say probably three or four months is best. Um, I wouldn't really recommend having as little time as I had because I wasn't sure I was gonna pass going into there and I would have liked to feel much more confident going into it. So those are my tips to help you pass the CIH exam. I would definitely say that I appreciated the experience of studying. I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but it was good because it reminded me of a lot of things I had forgotten. And also I feel more confident and like I know more about industrial hygiene now than I did before. So it prepares you to take that next step in your career as well. I hope this video helps you out. If it did, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Also, if you are studying for the exam, you have questions, you have anything that you would like to ask, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to help out. All right, best of luck to you. Until the next time, I'll see you guys later.